the return journey is one of the most dangerous parts of any shuttle mission. And it can be fatal, as every astronaut is all too aware. In 2003, the orbiter Columbia burned up as it re-entered Earth's atmosphere, killing all seven crew members. The problem is the incredible speed. At re-entry, the orbiter is travelling at 17,000 miles an hour. High speeds in space are not a problem. There's no atmosphere. But start hitting trillions of tiny particles in the upper atmosphere and things change. Hitting all those particles creates friction, a lot of friction, and that generates heat. Aeroplanes, missiles and bullets are usually streamlined so they can slip through the air creating as little friction as possible. And early scientists thought that approach would work for rockets. But in the 1950s, space scientist Harvey Allen realised that rocket speeds come with their own problem. Travel at five times the speed of sound and above and the friction is too intense. No matter how sleek the design, no known substance could survive the heat for long. Alan's solution was, at first hearing, pretty radical. Rather than make the nose of anything needing to re-enter the atmosphere sharp and sleek, he said to make it blunt, deliberately unaerodynamic. And that's why the orbiter's blunt nose can be connected back to a particularly unaerodynamic flying object the cannonball. We now know a round cannonball is not the perfect flying shape, but its ultimate aim is not to fly, it's to smash as much of something as possible. But how does smashing into air help the orbiter on re-entry? This is the University of Manchester, but it's a very specific little corner of the university, because these machines are dedicated to serving another very, very special machine through there. It's a wind tunnel, but these winds will be travelling at hypersonic speeds, up to max six. That's six times the speed of sound. Now, obviously, that kind of performance involves the release and control of stupendous amounts of energy, which is why the, the actual wind tunnel itself isn't as, as big as you might be used to. So, to go inside it, I have one mini orbiter with a pointy nose and one with a blunt nose. Costas Contis is the head of aerospace research. First, I want to see exactly why a pointy nose design is such a bad idea for the orbiter. I guess it's got to be fairly firmly fixed. Of course, because you don't want them to fly around during no. the air. It's quite dangerous. What if, what if this tunnel goes off while my hand's in there? Um, probably you will lose your hand. Literally just blown away? Uh, of course, yes. I don't want that to happen. Let's get this no. done quickly. At these speeds, you can only see what's happening with an elaborate system of mirrors, lenses and high-speed photography. So, if we can uh, switch off the lights, please. Yes. That's a lot of energy about to be released through there, isn't it? That's right, yes. A 3,700 mile an hour jet of air, to be precise. Fire! That was strangely frightening. Well, well let's get that image up and have a look. Right. So this is with a pointed nose. That's right. With this system, you can exactly. actually see the shockwave. The air around the nose is compressed so much that it forms superheated shockwaves. It actually heats the wings. So that's the tricky part, because it's quite dangerous. The temperature will be very high. So this shockwave, it punches through the air. The air goes over it. That's right. And it's actually... I, I thought that was good. Look, it's making a tiny hole. It's sleek. But where that line hits the wing, exactly, there's yes. a lot of energy being deposited, deposited right yes. there. The wingtips are exposed to high-speed air, so lots of friction. And at orbiter speeds, the shockwave itself reaches thousands of degrees Celsius. 
So it can literally, because of the shape of its nose, it can tear its own wings off. Exactly, yes. And the wings are rather important. Up until re-entry, the shuttle has been a rocket. But now, it's a plane that has to glide back to Earth. So entirely counter to what we would expect, the pointy shape doesn't work. So how will the blunt nose fare? Fire! OK, that's it. OK, lights up. Right, moment of truth. This is where we see, hopefully, some difference. Go on, then. OK, let's press yeah. the button. OK. Whoa! You see? Well, that couldn't be clearer, could it? With a blunt nose, the shockwave misses the wings completely and deflects high-speed air away from the orbiter's wings. So, no friction. And it's completely counterintuitive. I just would not guess that if I was sitting down to design something to re-enter the atmosphere, mm -hmm. I would immediately think, well, pointed is best. That runs against everything that your kind of instinct tells me. So, thanks to a cannonball, blunt is best for re-entry. But as is seen in this actual footage from the orbiter's cockpit, the shockwave around the craft glows intensely. At Mach 25, it's superheated to 5,500 degrees C. It might not touch the orbiter, but as you can imagine, it still makes it pretty warm. So at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, scientist Martin Wilson is in charge of producing heat-resistant tiles to protect the space vehicle. Heat. It's very hot. So this essentially is a kiln. Uh, yes, this is one of the uh, kilns that we use in the, the various heat treatments of the uh, tiles during manufacture. And what sort of temperature is it in there? The temperature inside the kiln is uh, 2,200 degrees, about 1,160 centigrade. And um, these are actually the materials from which the tiles oh, are made. It up. Um, it's pure silica. But it's just come out of there. It just came out of there. Seconds ago. Still very, very hot. Have you got special hands? Can I do that? No, you can do that. You can touch it only by the corners. That's just come out of that kiln. That's... That's astonishing. You can still see the energy that's bouncing around inside. Silica cools down very fast at its edges. But because the tiles are effectively a silica foam, they're also full of air. And this makes them great insulators. So, thanks to these heat-resistant tiles and cannonballs, the orbiter completes re-entry and glides in for landing. It touches down at just 220 miles an hour. 